Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. I have what I think is an interesting video put together for you today. It is inspired by two comments. The first one is a long comment, so bear with me. They posted this video on episode four. Mufu Shu was the person who posted it. It says, my question is about the paid off portion that starts at 13 minutes and 55 seconds. This is the video they're commenting on is buy a house, owner financing basics. So I just talked about what an owner financed uh, deal looks like. And I have bought and sold houses in this way, several. Um, so it says, you said a letter goes to the owner and is signed and the person owns it and can do whatever they want. Well, I know some uh, someone in another state who bought a house owner financed from an older couple. The buyer was making regular payments on it for years without any problems. Then when it came for the la time for the last check, they sent it to the owner and nothing happened. I'm going to summarize the rest of this. Long story short, he bought this from an older couple, and by the time he sent the older, I mean the last payment, this couple had skedaddled off somewhere, and he doesn't know whether it was due to some sort of... Uh, old age, death, or whatever it was, but basically the buyer was left hanging, and when you're done with an owner financing deal, the seller has to fulfill, their last duty is to basically sort of give you a final rece uh, receipt. I believe it's called the letter of satisfaction, and then that, or certificate of satisfaction, and then it's filed with the uh, city, and it's, you know, it's, it's legally yours at that point. You've proved I just can't think of what it's actually called. Is it the, it's not the, I think it's the deed of trust. I should have this answer before I started making this video. But like when you buy a house, there's this other document that's basically saying that, you know, you're buying it from somebody. It's not yours outright. You can just buy it all cash. So they have to satisfy that part of the whole deal. And then that person's name comes out of it. Um, so they are asking, you know, the, the actual question in that was what happens if after a long time passes and the seller dies or moves away or has a life-changing event um, and no longer completes their side of the transaction. So I bought a house that that happened to and I'm going to talk about that. The second comment that I'm sort of addressing here was, have you ever sold a house because you foresaw the property values in the area on decline? Yes. So the house that I bought, I ended up selling and I sold it for that reason. To summarize, um, and that was the $5,000 house that I've referenced on this channel as well. That video is called $5,000 House, My First Investment, and that was episode two. So a summary of that uh, deal was I saw a house on Craigslist for $29,000, negotiated the price for $20,000, ended up buying it for $5,000 because there were title issues. The deal was I gave him five grand down as a down payment, and then I was owner financing it from him. The payments, I believe, were like $306 for five years, I believe. And that at probably 6% interest, I think is what it was, six or seven. And so each month that went by that he did not correct that title issue was going to count as a month I paid. So basically, if he never fixed it, I'd get the house for $5,000. If part of the way through the term that I was supposed to make these payments to him on, he fixed it, great, issue solved. I start making payments. Nothing's different except I saved a little money. He never did anything. Um, so the whole time went by, so I got it for $5,000. The... Um, Renovation that I did on that house to get it ready to rent took about a year, cost probably maybe $5,000 or so, maybe not that much. And I then rented the house privately just to an individual. Um, it was a family for $595. That went terrible, ended up having to evict them. Um, the house sat for a year maybe, and then I kind of cleaned it up. It took about $3,000 to clean it up, I believe. The second time, I made a few improvements, and then I rented it out through the Section 8 program, and uh, that time I rented it out for $550. Um, so then that went better at first, but then that also went terrible eventually. The first time went much more terrible because I had to evict them. The second time, 
went terrible, but they were much more understanding of how terrible they were, and they opted to leave. Um, then I let the house sit for several years, um, and then I was just like, I don't want to fool with this place anymore. Uh, and I just decided that I was just going to go ahead and try to sell it. It just took me a long time to even want to go over there. I um, let the um, insurance on the place go the ways. It sat there for probably, man, two or three years was no insurance in a, I would say, a very high-risk neighborhood for my area as far as the place being vandalized. And it sort of had been semi-vandalized. People broke into it several times and used the house in uh, foul ways, but um, ended up just getting interested in selling the place. I just, the house had the title issues, and with the owner financing, I was kind of waiting for that five years to kind of burn up, and uh, that all went by. And then uh, when you're done, again, referencing the, um, the comments, I needed to get that, uh, the person that I bought it from to kind of do their part of it and say he's, you know, deal's over. You know, we've, uh, he's satisfied the agreement. And, um, and all this was done legally through a closing agency. Um, so I started trying to get in touch with him. The guy never responded. I tried calling him and all kinds of stuff, sent him letters, I even looked it up. He lived in, I mean, totally different state from me. Um, and I looked it up on the real estate records in the area he lived because I had his address and everything from the deal. And it looked like he still owned it. And it was a, like a really nice family type house. So I assumed it wasn't like a rental um, or been converted into a rental. So I just assumed he still lived there. So he just didn't want to contact me. So I ended up um, using uh, someone else's phone that had an area code that was very close to where he lived because I knew they were from that area. So I used their phone. And he picked up on like the first or second ring because it was, you know, more likely just to be somebody knows. He's like, hey, man, you know, he's just like, hey, uh, you know, hi. He just answered it like it was just, I don't know, how you pick a phone up. And I told him who I was and he just hung up. So I was like, well, that is bizarre. And I tried calling him right back. He went straight to voicemail. So he just, you know, declined the call. And I left a message and just said uh, that I'm not looking for him to have to do anything much at all. I said, just need that one little, you know, piece of paperwork to be filed, and then he would never hear from me again. We'd just be done. So he didn't do it. And so I had to go through a real estate attorney in this whole process that took over three months probably to complete. So you can go through this. It's just basically that they have to be mailed something. It's, you know, that they have to sign that they get it, or if they don't, it comes back. Then you have to wait this period and prove that you have um, you've satisfied your part of the owner financing, and then that they won't respond, and then then it's just handled in the local courts for the uh, area that the house is in. Um, so I'm not using all. I mean, it's just I'm, I'm I'm abbreviating the whole thing. All you have to do, if you have this problem, is go to a real estate attorney and tell them. Then they'll do it. You don't have to know everything. That's one thing that I you'll hear me preach on videos, and is don't get hung up on on having to know everything, you know, let someone else be the person that knows that. When you're trying to put these deals together, you'll learn a lot. You know, eventually, it'll sound like you know what you're talking about, but you can hear it from people as you go. You know, if you're trying to work out a deal with a house and you're not sure how to deal with it, well, you're going to be working with a closing agency or a real estate attorney, so you just let them do that part of it, and then if they need you to do something, they'll let you know. And then, of course, all throughout the process, you'll see it happen, then you'll be more knowledgeable in the future. So when things like this pop up, you're going to be like, oh, I know how to handle that. Or, you know, I'll just get them to tell me what to do or they'll just handle it. Um, so it can sound complicated, but it ain't got nothing to do with you a lot because it's, you know, what the real estate attorney does. So while that process was going on, I just said, I'm going to sell this place. I listed it on Craigslist for $40,000. And after a bunch of silly responses, um, I didn't show it to anybody, though. I had a bunch of people asking about it. But I ended up um, finding a buyer, and I've got the contract. First contract. So just going to kind of read it to you. I'm going to leave out the names and specifics. I, buyer's name, will purchase the property known as the address from my name. Basic terms. Price, 40000 
Down payment, 6000 The remaining balance will be owner financed. Term length, seven years, which is 84 months. Interest rate, 8%. Sold as is. Buyer has inspected the property. Non-refundable deposit of $500. And then there's a couple more things on there listing, you know, the closing date and that the buyer has to provide me proof of income, marketable title, which just means that I have to provide this to him without those title issues that I told you about. And at this time, I had not told him about the title issues because this says this is in there, marketable title. This protects him. I was just going to have this taken care of. These were the title issues that made me be able to buy the house for 5000 versus the twenty. dollars um, and then we signed, he gave me the deposit, and then I gave this stuff over to the real estate attorney. Long story short, those title issues could not be resolved at all. There was some sort of reason, I don't even barely remember now, but it just could not be resolved because there was no one to get in touch with. To no bank, no, uh, no none of these little companies that were involved in the foreclosures that popped up, buying people's debt couldn't get in touch with the previous owner, don't even know who they were, just got their name, but no record of who and what and where they are. And so in that case, what it looked like was going to happen is just a certain amount of time, as in years, was going to have to go by, and I believe it was eight more years. I'm not sure exactly, but it was a good amount of time that was going to still have to go by, um, or maybe even just three. I don't know what it was, but I was just like, I don't want to just sit around waiting for this. Um, so I had to tell the guy, and he backed out. And it was a major shame because I had somebody who was going to buy a house for me. It was rough. It was in an area I didn't want to deal with. Um, the whole thing, I had paid 5000 for it, and I was going to get forty. Now, it was owner financing. Like I said, he was going to be making, I forgot what the monthly payment was, but $40,000. He was going to give me $6,000 as a down payment. I paid five for it. So I was going to be getting my, you know, that initial purchase price. And of course, there's a lot of years of, I did make some money off of it renting it, even though I had to evict the people, but it went bad. Um, so I let him back, I let, let him back out of the deal, gave him his deposit back. And I told him that I was just going to just continue to fix it. And if I fixed it soon, I'd let him know. Ended up, like I said, not being able to fix it. And I said, well, shoot. I said, before I just try to do anything else, I'm going to offer it to the guy for less money and just see if he'll buy it with the problem. Ended up calling him back and I just said, I'll sell it to you for $30,000. Let me tell you the next. He went for it. It's the exact same, exact same contract with these terms changed. Price, $30,000. Down payment, I did $4,000. And same interest rate, same term length, seven years at 8%. Sold as is. And then in the contract, the whole thing was described what that issue was. Um, so he knowingly bought it with this problem. And I told him my same thing. I said, well, I've owned it for this long and nothing's happened. And then the issue actually existed this many years before I even bought it. And so in all that time, just nothing's happened. So he said, yeah, I can wrap my head around it and uh, I'll, I'll proceed and go ahead and buy it. So what I ended up doing was taking a house that I bought for $5,000, had a bad experience with it, was able to find someone who, for whatever reason, went for it. They didn't care. He fully had, he looked a place over, he came and looked at it twice. Um, he talked to the real estate attorney. Real estate attorney explained the whole thing to him. So there was no kind of fishy business. He was fully aware of what he was buying. It's like buying a car uh, that the engine's still running, but it's about to blow and you know it. And uh, so he's like, yeah, I understand what I'm doing. Um, so uh, I basically turned a house that I still had to pay the property taxes on. I had to have insurance on. I'm talking about when it was mine. Um, the overhead of owning it, if anything went wrong, the hassle of fooling with tenants, all that type of stuff. In, in doing all that, I was getting between $550 and $600, depending on those two times that I rented it. And again, that didn't even work out. Ended up turning it into seven years worth of income, and I get a check every single month on time. So that's the beautiful part of it, is the person that I've sold it to has done a wonderful job. So that was a situation where I was looking at that house, and I said, this house sucks. It sucked when I bought it. It still sucks years later. The I don't want to say the neighborhood sucks in terms of like 
the people who owned houses in that time, um, on that in that area. I actually liked them, the neighbors there, where I was very familiar with them. So I liked them, but it was a a rougher area with a lot of rental. So it just and it was also a sort of a cut through street that went to um, some gas stations. So it had a lot of pedestrian traffic, which caused problems like people throwing rocks at windows. And it was just it was just not a good place for me to own uh, own real estate in. So um, now the house is on once in a blue moon. I drive past it going to another one of my houses and uh, it looks like he's just got it rented. And it's ever since I sold it, which has been over a year, maybe two years now, it has been the same people living in it unless they gave gave them everything they have outside, but it looks like it's the same people living in it. So the answers to the first comment about the what do you do, you just get with a real estate attorney and you need to basically prove that you're trying to contact the previous owner and then if you can't get in touch with them, the real estate attorney will take over and submit what he needs to submit to the city. Um, and then as far as selling a property that you can foresee as being a bad thing, because that's what I also saw in this. I was like, I don't see this place improving anytime soon um, as, as far as the general area. I saw it was too far off, so it was better to go ahead and convert it into some sort of income than to try to wait it out and wait out for like some big opportunity that was never going to come. It's better to go ahead and get that money and do something different with it. So now I'm applying that $405, which is like, I'm getting rent for this house with none of the overhead of owning it. All I have to do is pay, uh, you know, income tax on that payment, but I'm not paying insurance and all this kind of stuff. And he's in charge of paying the property taxes and insurance and what's it called, a rider on the insurance. I'm on his insurance policy for this house as the lender. So if the house like burned down or something, I would get paid for the, um, uh, uh, you know, I would get paid before he would get paid, basically, I guess is how it works. I'm on there. But um, so that is the story of uh, that particular situation. And um, it was one of those things that when I sold it, the first time I couldn't believe it, even on the, uh, when he when he went for it the second time, I just, I, I was blown away um, and just so pleased. I mean, I, I hope it's working out for him. He may have some specific situation. He claimed that he was going to be renting the house out to someone he knew, but he wasn't from the area, so I thought that was strange. But um, uh, it's none of my business, and it looks like it's worked out well for him. It just did not work out well for me. So that is kind of also goes back to that thing when I say there's a place for everyone in real estate. Um, I didn't handle it, you know, correctly, obviously, but perhaps he is. But um, that's pretty much it. Hope that wasn't too long-winded and just a good example of uh, that maybe y'all can kind of just keep in mind when you're looking for deals that just not everything is going to be standard. Um, you know, how I found it, how I sold it, those issues I dealt with. You know, a lot of people just, when they're considering uh, um, referencing what I'm doing, considering their own situations, they go, well, in my house, uh, in my area, things average this price and you never be able to do that. Well, if you're just looking at houses with for you know for sale signs from huge real estate companies and you're on major real estate websites looking for houses for sale that's one thing the most official place that I've ever found a house is Craigslist from there it goes back down to I just noticed something about some house that makes me think that it's a situation that I could get in and uh, buy some house and so it then it just becomes trying to get in contact with somebody and then make a deal with them. So uh, don't assume that you can't pull off some sort of weird deal. Um, you know, based on um, assuming everything is the norm, I guess is the way. Uh, you know, th This stuff just is not even... I don't even know what to call it. This is like... I don't even know. I almost called it like panning for gold uh when you know you know versus just going to the bank and getting the money you know going and buying a house a normal way is just like going to the bank and using an atm machine and this is like you know you want to buy buy something and you're panning for gold in the creek i think i've been talking too long i'm about to go crazy you know coming up with some crazy uh 
uh, comparisons here. So I'm going to wrap it up. If you're interested in finding houses, again, my book is uh, Cheap Houses, How I Find and Buy Inexpensive Real Estate. That link will be in the description below. You can reference that other video where I talk about the $5,000 house as well as the um, owner financing video. I'll probably link to those at the end of this one, the suggested videos. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, and I may feature those comments in a future video as the topic. Thank you for watching.